Mercury Atlas 6 was launched on February 20th, 1962 at 7.43 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral. Its mission was to bring astronaut John Glenn into orbit, making him the first American and third person to reach orbit. Glenn named his capsule Friendship 7. Prior to this mission, Mercury Atlas 5 carried Enos the Chimpanzee into orbit, and Enos returned safely after orbiting twice. The Atlas LV-3B launcher has a unique type of one and a half stage design and the most important results of this are that the G-forces are very high near the end of the short five minute flight to orbit and the launcher is so thin that it needed to be reinforced just to carry the 1.35 ton Mercury capsule. While all the Mercury astronauts were exceptional test pilots and engineers, John Glenn was an obvious choice to make the first crewed orbit for the United States. He was a Korean War hero and was scrupulous about maintaining his public image. His comfort in the public eye made it no surprise to anyone when he started running for political office in 1964, just two years after this mission, and was eventually senator from Ohio in 1974. So there was little fear that he would handle fame badly. Prior to February 20th, there had been a launch attempt on January 27th with Glenn in the capsule, but that was scrubbed at T-29 minutes due to bad weather that would prevent filming of the launch. That was fortunate because there had been problems with the fuel tanks, and shortly after the scrub, a leak was found that required weeks of repairs. Just prior to liftoff on February 20th, Scott Carpenter wished his fellow astronaut a safe trip with the words, Godspeed John Glenn. Though due to a communication issue, John Glenn didn't actually hear those words, about five minutes later, Glenn was in orbit. The Mercury capsule had a limited amount of fuel for maneuvering, 16.3 kilograms in the automatic system and 11.1 kilograms for manual control. Glenn used the fuel to orient the capsule, prograde, and otherwise as necessary, but on his first orbit found that a yaw thruster was malfunctioning, causing difficulty maintaining the correct orientation. After experiencing his first 45-minute night in orbit, Glenn noticed small, mysterious, luminescent particles outside the window which would come free if he knocked against the capsule. This turned out to be water that had condensed, especially in the cold of Earth's nighttime side. On the second of three orbits, the spacecraft started giving ground control a reading that the heat shield was no longer locked in place, which would mean only the retro rocket pack was holding it. Control told Glenn repeatedly to keep the landing bag deploy switch off without telling him the problem. He was suspicious, but had other problems. He was getting a bit warm and humid, and his maneuvering fuel was diminishing because of the need to constantly adjust. Eventually, he was instructed to just let the capsule drift rather than use the fuel. Preparing for re-entry, Flight Director Chris Kraft and Mission Director Walter Williams decided the retro pack would have to be kept in place just in case it was the only thing holding the heat shield. Eventually, the retro pack broke free during the re-entry and burned up spectacularly but harmlessly next to the capsule window. It turned out that the heat shield had been fine and the sensor had malfunctioned, but by the time the retro pack broke away, the pressure from the atmosphere would have held it in place anyway. John Glenn was recovered safely after a flight just under five hours long. The problems both prior to launch and during the mission aptly showed how daring and dangerous a mission it was. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Mercury Atlas 6.